chops and steaks fit for a yarn. What are you looking at? I'm not afraid of you, you know, even if you are my elder. It's no fun getting pushed around all the time. Yes, Wraith bullies me all the time. All the elders think I'm a milk drinker because I can't fight. Nobody understands. If you can get Wraith to leave me alone, I'll be your best friend. Forever. I'll, I'll pay you too. My whole life savings. Two septums. Oh, good. She'll listen to you. I just know it. Well, I used to sneak out at night and try to tip over the big ox in the gray mane's yard. And me and Mila used to climb up on the roof of Dragon's Reach and look for bird's eggs. But I don't do that stuff anymore. Father keeps catching me and then I get in trouble. Until next time. Boys, girls, dogs, elders, there's nobody I won't fight. Yeah, why? Okay, okay, I'll leave him alone. I was just kidding around. Besides, if he'd only kiss me, I wouldn't have to beat him up all the time. You done? I bet you could slay one of those mean old dragons. I bet you could do anything. Dragon Boar. It's an honor.
anything I can get you, just let me know. Is it absolutely necessary for you to bother me right now? Pardon me, my lady. Would you care to hear me play my lute? If you fancy a bit of music, let me know. Depends. Are you thirsty? Hungry? Both? I play the lute. If you'd like to hear something, it only costs five gold. Have you spoken to Fastred yet? Why, thank no. you. I'll tell You're you. very kind. If I still interested? Away from here tomorrow, I'd do it. But Klimek still has so much to Thank do. you, milady. Klimek is doing just fine. You should follow your heart. Perhaps one day, but not today. If I were you, I'd keep away from the barrow on the east side of town. Taunted. There ain't much more to tell. They're haunted, and you should stay away. Look, I've seen one of the spirits with my very own eyes. When it glared at me, I swear it burned right through my soul. Fortunately, they seem to be sticking to the barrow. I think they're guarding it. Certainly isn't helping my business any. Who'd want to rent a room anywhere near a haunted barrow? If you think there's anything you can do, be my guest. Sure thing. It's yours for a day. I'll show you to your room. Right this way. Watch what you're doing. Let me know if there's anything else you need. Pardon me, my lady. I've always fancied a journey up the 7,000 steps to the monastery. Anything to I break the boredom of living you. in this town. I It'd envy you. Shame if you stopped. A pleasant journey, my lady. We don't get many visitors through here. Unless they're headed up to High Hrothgar, of course. The Greybeards are a solitary lot. I don't think they've ever ventured outside their monastery. We get the occasional pilgrim passing through here on their way to the summit, but almost all of them have returned disappointed. Keep your eyes open in the barrow. That's how they get you. If you fancy a bit of music, let me know. You should probably be in bed. You're looking a bit under the weather. Is it absolutely necessary for you to bother me right now? 
You don't look like a pilgrim. Why bother visiting Iverstead? Clinic brings food supplies up to them once every few weeks, when the weather permits it. Other than that, they seem like a quiet lot. Don't really know too much about them. <sighs> what a boring conversation. Keep an eye out for wolves if you're headed up the path to High Hrothgar. I did. Strange days when the monks will do that. I wonder what it means. I like to spend time up here. Walk the steps. Meditate on the emblems. Doesn't hurt when I bag some game along the way. They're not the sort to take visitors. But I never go that high up the path anyway. Some folk who make the trip leave them food or other essentials. But not to make conversation. Hi.
Keep an eye out for wolves if you're headed up the path to High Rothgar. Need something? I was just outside Iverstead when it happened. It's an exciting moment. Nothing like this has happened in centuries. Just a pilgrim. I'd prefer to leave it at that, if you don't mind. Walking the steps, meditating on the emblems. I make this trip every few years.
So, a Dragonborn appears at this moment in the turning of the age. First, let us see if you truly are Dragonborn. Let us taste of your voice. Strike us. The power of your voice. Do not be afraid. Your shout will not harm us. Dragonborn, it is you. Welcome to High Hrothgar. I am Master Angir. I speak for the Greybeards. Now, tell me, Dragonborn, why have you come here? Well, we are here to guide you in that pursuit, just as the Greybeards have sought to guide those of the Dragonblood that came before you. You are not the first. There have been many of the dragon blood since Akatosh first bestowed that gift upon mortal kind. Whether you are the only dragonborn of this age, that is not ours to know. You are the only one that has been revealed thus far. That is all I can say. We are the Greybeards, followers of the way of the voice. You stand in high Hrothgar, on the slopes of Kinarith's sacred mountain. Here we commune with the voice of the sky and strive to achieve balance between our inner and outer selves. You have shown that you are dragonborn. You have the inborn gift. But do you have the discipline and temperament to follow the path laid out for you? Uh, that remains to be seen. Without training, you have already taken the first steps towards projecting your voice into a thum, a shout. Now let us see if you are willing and able to learn. When you shout, you speak in the language of dragons. Thus, your dragon blood gives you an inborn ability to learn words of power. All shouts are made up of three words of power. As you master each word, your shout will become progressively stronger. Master Einarth will now teach you Gro, the second word in unrelenting force. Gro means balance in the dragon tongue. Combine it with Fus, force, to focus your thumb or shock. how the rest of us learn shouts. As Dragonborn, you can absorb a slain dragon's life force and knowledge directly. As part of your initiation, Master Einarth will allow you to tap into his understanding of Rome. your unrelenting force shout to strike the targets as they appear. Fools!
Fools! Perform your next trial in the courtyard. Follow Master Bori. Wolfgar will demonstrate whirlwind sprint. Then it will be your turn. Master Lori. X. Now, your turn. Stand next to me. Master Bori will open the gate. Use your whirlwind sprint to pass through before it closes. Quick mastery of a new thum is uh, astonishing. I'd heard the stories of the abilities of Dragonborn, but to see it for myself. No, indeed not. But beware that your skill does not outstrip your wisdom. You are now ready for your last trial. Retrieve the horn of Jürgen Windcaller, our founder, from his tomb in the ancient fane of Ostengrad. Remain true to the way of the voice, and you will return. No doubt, the appearance of a dragonborn at this time is not an accident. Your destiny is surely bound up with the return of the dragons. You should focus on honing your voice, and soon your path will be made clear. There is indeed much that we know that you do not. That does not mean that you are ready to understand it. Do not let your easy mastery of the voice tempt you into the arrogance of power. That has been the downfall of many Dragonborn before you. Dragons have the inborn ability to learn and project their voice. Dragons also are able to absorb the power of their slain brethren. A few mortals are born with similar abilities, whether a gift or a curse has been a matter of debate down through the centuries. What you have already learned in a few days took 
even the most gifted of us years to achieve. Some believe that Dragonborn are sent into the world by the gods at times of great need. We will speak more of that later, when you are ready. Dragons have always been able to shout. Language is intrinsic to their very being. There is no difference in the dragon tongue between debating and fighting. Shouting comes as naturally to a dragon as breathing or speaking. In mythic times, when mortal kind was in great need, the goddess Kinnereth granted us the ability to speak as dragons do. For most people, long years of training are required to learn even the simplest shout. But for you, the dragon speech is in your blood, and you learn it almost without effort. Five, our leader Parthenax lives alone on the peak of the throat of the world. When your voice can open the path, you will know you are ready to speak to him. As I said, you will know you are ready when your voice can open the path to him. We study the way of the voice according to the teachings of our founder, Jürgen Windkorn. Very few are permitted to study with us here at High Hrothgar. But in your case, Dragonborn, it is a privilege to guide you towards mastery of your voice. Their voices are too powerful for anyone not trained in the way to withstand. Even a whisper could kill you. The voice was a gift of the goddess Kinnereth. At the dawn of time, she gave mortals the ability to speak as dragons do. Although this gift has often been misused, the only true use of the voice is for the worship and glory of the gods. True mastery of the voice can only be achieved when your inner spirit is in harmony with your outward actions. In the contemplation of the sky, Kinnereth's domain, and the practice of the voice, we strive to achieve this balance. The Dragonborn is an exception to all the rules. The Dragon Blood itself is a gift of the gods. If we accept one gift, how can we deny the other? As Dragonborn, you have received the ability to shout directly from Akatosh. We therefore seek to guide you on the proper use of your gift which transcends the restrictions which bind other mortals. Scott, your training proceeds well, Dragonborn. He was a great war leader of the ancient Nords, a master of the voice or tongue. After the disaster at Red Mountain, where the Nord army was annihilated, he spent many years pondering the meaning of that terrible defeat. He finally came to realize that the gods had punished the Nords for their arrogant and blasphemous misuse of the voice. He was the first to understand that the voice should be used solely for the glory and worship of the gods, not the glory of men. Jürgen Windcaller's mastery of the voice eventually overcame all opposition, and the way of the voice was born. Breath and focus.